name's Kate Boyle. I head up data services at the Police Digital Service, otherwise known as PDS. Um, PDS is a non-profit organisation that's working with policing on all things digital, um, from cyber to tech, and covers off data and analytics as well. Hello there, I'm Amy Smith. I'm the Director of Data at the Metropolitan Police Service. I'm also the Volunteer Chair of the National Police Data and Analytics Board, um, and it's very good to be here today. So it's been a really exciting time in the last 12 to 18 months for the Digital Data Analytics and Tech Coordination Committee. We've established four boards, um, everything from the National Police Technology Council to um, the Insurance and Cybersecurity Board, through to our Business Change Council, but also we have a Data and Analytics Board that um, I, I'm chairing. So that's a big achievement today, Amy. Um... How is it all structured? I'm not going to pretend it's easy because the thing that people don't necessarily understand about all of those boards is that they're led by volunteers. So people who are experts in the business from forces, from the organisations that we serve, and they do this on top of their day jobs. So as far as data is concerned, we've got four leads from across um, forces in England and Wales, and we do have representation from PSNI and Police Scotland too, and they chair areas of data responsibility, data availability, data foundations and skills. And they're really important because they align perfectly with the UK's data strategy, which means that we know we're delivering the capabilities that not just policing needs, but UK needs too. Um, and we're soon to be merged with the Data Analytics Engineering and Data Science Board, which means PCC Chris Todd will be co-chairing the Data Analytics Board on behalf of policing with me. Brilliant. And what's your biggest achievement today? I honestly think it's about the fact that we've even got a board. 12 to 18 months ago, we couldn't even get data on the agenda. People weren't necessarily talking about it. And that's not to say that data and analytics wasn't being done well in some forces, but to try and get all chiefs, all forces and organisations aligned to a common strategy and really, really move forward at pace on delivering those capabilities, not just for a force, but actually a sector as a whole. Genuinely, that's our biggest achievement. And the thing I'm most pleased about is those volunteers I was telling you about have been shortlisted for an industry award um, for the way that they delivered that. And that is unheard of in the policing world. And I'm genuinely pleased, really fingers crossed at the end of September for that award. Congratulations, Amy, that's great news. Fingers crossed that you win that one. Um, with all of that in mind, where are the business priorities? What is, what is the board going to be focusing on in the next like six to nine months? The first and foremost one is data maturity assessment. Under that pillar of data availability and responsibility, it's really important that we understand what what level of maturity we at force by force so that we can start to create a narrative as, as a sector about whether we're any really good at this or not. And I think in the areas of responsibility, which is about data protection and data sharing, or the areas of availability, which is more about how much do we put out publicly? What do we share? How do we use data to engage our partners? And particularly that area of data foundations, have we even got the right roles and skills in place in forces and how mature are they? The data maturity assessment draws all of that together. The second big priority for us is going to be responding to any legislative change that comes with the data protection and digital information bill, which we're expecting in early 2024. Now, this should release some shackles for us about how we use data as a sector, to be honest, how everybody use data as a sector. They'll be removing some bureaucracy and administration, but there's also some risk in that because we've got established roles across forces like a data protection officer, which will be asked to evolve. And I'd rather evolve that consistently across the sector rather than do it piecemeal force by force. Otherwise we could end up with a, with a load of people who are doing jobs that don't align or are really in demand or potentially don't give force the risk management and opportunities that they deserve. Um, but you know about data maturity assessment. That is a big priority for you to deliver for us. Do you want to talk about that a bit more and also tell us what other things PDS data has got going? Data maturity, one of the biggest things I've, my team have got on the pad this year. We have been lucky enough to be commissioned by the board to do that. And I have a team, it's a small team, but it's a cracking team of industry facing skilled people that have done data maturity in previous organisations. We are, I think, six down um, with 40 odd still to go, uh, but we're getting great traction from across the forces and the information they're giving us is invaluable to help the board drive through that change at a national level. So it's not 
the only thing that you're working on. There's lots of great <laughs> expertise that you've got in your team and PDS, and I know from yourself personally. So there's other things that you're helping and with, and it'd be great to talk about those too. You mentioned one of the streams is data foundations, the key to unlocking a lot of the value in data. You know, what does it mean? Where is it housed? How do we access it? How do we control it? We've been working with Chief Superintendent Jeff Camp, who currently leads that foundations and established a bit of a mini data by design service where we're asking forces to help us understand how we can provide processes, frameworks to help the joining up of the dots. So really excited for that. You know, we've done probably about five or six chats with forces who are telling us all about their data definitions and their cataloging and their lineage and how it all fits together. So really looking forward to bringing that back up and, and seeing where we can add that major difference in in improving the quality across policing. My personal passion, if you like, is we're helping um, Wendy Le Everly, who's leading the data skills work stream, um, and we're driving forward career pathways and role profiles for all kinds of data talent across policing, um, together with a community of best practice. We'll help join forces and join those skills for the greater good. So I'm really excited about that piece as well. And the government has produced a DDAT framework, which defines what those roles should be and helps us start to shape career pathways. So I'm really glad that you, you're able to pick that up and run with it, because I think otherwise it would take a long time to put that in place. So data is the second most critical asset that policing holds outside of its people, which is, of course, it's number one. And I don't say that lightly. I say that because it's absolutely true. If you think about it, there's not a single decision that isn't made now, right now, in policing that doesn't need data to assist that decision making. And therefore, it's really, really important that we look after the data that we collect and we get it right. And the reason that that's important isn't just so that we can be more effective at our jobs. It's because it's really important to public transparency and trust. So right now, I think data is absolutely critical to regaining policing by consent. It's something we know all too well in the Met, uh, that the public don't necessarily trust what we're doing and how we do it, or certainly that trust has dipped. I would say the same across the whole sector. I mean, I could give you hundreds of examples where data really makes things work well, but the point I would try and make is where we haven't got data and therefore we didn't make the right decisions. And it's the absence of good data and data decision making that leads us to a lack of transparency and trust by the public. And I think that's where we've really got to work hard and why we need chief constables and those who work in the sector to really, really back what we're trying to do in building our data capabilities. A really critical area that proves this point um, because it's seen as bureaucratic, but actually isn't and actually is fundamental to the way we manage stakeholders and give a better service to the public. It's data sharing. What Kate and the PDS have been helping us to do is from a national level, set up a digital data exchange so that we've got data sharing agreements in one place that describe what we can do, that gives consent to all forces to do that properly and across the NPCC. This is a critical asset, not just for making good decisions for us, but making good service and effective service delivery for the public. Okay, PDS is a trusted partner, as are you, and the thing and expertise that you bring is kind of horizon scanning and look at what's coming. So what do you think are the future challenges and opportunities for policing in this space? Well, I think the first thing we've got to talk about is the elephant in the room, the uh, the data ethics and the analytical eth ethics. If we source and use the wrong data for the wrong outcome across policing, we're going to lose trust. Um, and not be able to produce the decision making factors that we need to do. Um, I think there's legislative changes coming down from the um, uh, analytical AI. I think that's going to have a massive impact. I think one of the biggest things that we need to focus on is those data skills and how people are going to be able to not only source and contain and manage and govern data, but also use them for the right outcomes through that analytic strand. And I think if there was a wish list I could have, it's for um, you know policing as a whole to understand that data privacy, whilst hugely, hugely important, data governance is up there next to it, right? So when we talk about a lot of this, you know, making sure our data is looked after, it's not just personal sensitive information. We could argue the whole of policing data has that angle, um, but it is around, you know, making sure that that data is controlled and secure and safely utilised. 
So Kate, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you um, and to be able to um, talk to people who've taken the time to listen to this blog. I'm totally agreed and right back at you. It's been <laughs> inspirational. You're always inspirational to me, Amy. So yeah, I look forward to lots more work.